Hi, I'm Maura, and today I'm going to show you how to put together these Ocean Zones project. The smaller one is for students who are only learning about three zones, and the five I do later in the video, and it's for students who are learning about all of the zones. So you'll color and cut out the sea life. You will do research and write about what it's like in each zone, and then you will glue this on the back to show how deep those different zones actually are. For the Ocean Zones project, you'll need paper, fine tip markers or colored pencils, scissors, and glue. I am going to use blue cardstock for the ocean portion. That means I won't need to color it, but if you don't have blue, you can certainly color white paper. And I'm using the cardstock just to make it a little sturdier as I cut and glue it together. But again, if you don't have that, paper will work just fine. You can purchase this printable from my Etsy shop at etsy.com slash shop slash fanfaron. And of course, if you'd rather not purchase it, you can freehand your own. I'm going to start by showing you how to do three ocean zones. So start by taking this page right here and folding backward on that gray dotted line and then cut on your black dashed lines. Next, take your glue stick and slather glue all over this portion that you just folded backwards. Then slide it behind your other Ocean Zones page and press down. These pages will go right over the top. Next, you'll add the names of the Ocean Zones right here. Now, depending on what grade your child is in, you might be learning different names. So we've got the Sunlit Zone or the Epipelagic Zone, which is the top layer that gets the most light then underneath that is the twilight zone, also known as the mesopelagic zone. There's a little bit of light that makes it down in there, but none in that last zone, which is called the midnight zone or the bathypelagic zone. As I was researching this project, I came across other names for these zones as well. So if you've been learning something different, there are some blank labels for you here to write those in and as you cut out the zones go ahead and glue them in order on your oceans pages there's also a spot for you to write your name and then I would glue this title down here at the bottom because there's fewer ocean animals that live down here. But you could also open it up and glue it inside if you would rather. Now it gets fun. It's time for children to research the different zones. They might find out the depth of those zones how much sunlight is in the zone, what type of animals live there. They can look up information on computers or in books and write down their research on these research pages I've included. These lines are closer together and these are further apart. And when they're finished, they can cut them out, open the correct flap and glue it right in place. Now it's time to color the sea life. You may want to have children color them true to colors that they might have found in their research, or you can just let them go to town and color however they would like to. The creatures are a little bit small just because they need to be able to fit on that page. So if you find that they're having trouble Staying in the lines, don't worry about it. 
there are a lot of sea creatures on here. So for younger children, I would suggest that you just pick a number of sea creatures that they are going to include in each zone and have them color that number. So maybe four for each zone. And that way they won't be overwhelmed with the number of sea creatures to choose from. But if you have a child who likes to color or is super interested in the ocean, then maybe they do all of them. Cut out the sea life in whatever manner is easiest for your child or your student. It might be easiest just to make squares or rectangles like this. And like the octopus. It might be easier to cut around the edges if you want to include more animals. I did this because I want to put as many of these sea creatures as I can on there and if I don't cut off the names it's going to take up a lot more space and there's not a whole lot of space on the pages. So cut however you would like. As you finish cutting out the sea life start placing it where it belongs in each zone on your ocean zones pages. Keep in mind that some of the sea life can be found in more than one zone whereas others can only be found in one, like the seaweed has to be in the sunlight zone. It needs the sun to grow, but sea cucumbers could be found in any zone. So I chose to place those things that could be found in more than one zone in the lowest zone in which they could be found. So for instance, the sperm whale spends a lot of time in the sunlight zone, but it can dive down to find food in the midnight zone. Scientists are still learning a lot about the deep ocean because it's so difficult to study. It's so dark and the pressure is really high down there. So you might find some new research that happens after I make this video that shows you where to put something. And as you finish placing everything and you know it's gonna fit where you want it, start gluing those things on your pages. One final thing that you might want to do is cut this depths of the ocean zones visual out and glue it to the back of your project. It helps you see that the ocean zones aren't the same sizes the way they look on the front of this project. We had to make them the same size as in the project because look, that sunlit zone is so tiny that there's no way I could fit all those animals that, and animals and plants that live there in this section. If you are making the Ocean Zones project with all five zones, of course your project is going to look a little bit different. You have more labels for each of those zones, and then I've added in some sea life that lives in the bottom zones as well for you to color. So you'll have two pieces for the bottom Ocean Zones page, and the bottom of the bottom has a black dash, a black, a black dash line for you to cut on. And then it also has a section right up here that says glue here. And you'll put that on the bottom of your other Ocean Zones bottom page and just try to line up these lines and the edges here. And I thought it would be fun to show you how to do the different zones in different colors based on how much light gets into that zone. So I printed this page in three different colors. This is gonna be the top zone that receives the most light. So again, cut on the black dash line. And then you will fold on the gray dotted line. I apologize if you're hearing extra noise in the back of the video. There are some jets flying around my house at the moment. Okay, I folded that. I'm gonna put some glue on it. 
And this goes right here on the top. Next, I've already cut and folded these two. So this is going to be the midnight zone, or sorry, the twilight zone. So it receives enough light to be able to see if it's day or night. And then here's my midnight zone. I didn't have any black card stack, plus it would be hard to see the lines on it. So I chose a dark blue. And of course, since the midnight zone has no light, that means everything below it has no light. So here's that portion. I cut here and here on the black dash lines, folded on the gray dotted lines. And now I'm going to glue this on as well. And the last thing that I need to do is to cut on this black dashed line as well. These next steps can be done in any order, whatever you feel like. I decided to attach the labels for the zones next, so I've cut them out. I chose the scientific names, so I'm doing the hadopelagic zone here. If you were interested in knowing both the names, you could certainly cut out both and then open up the different zones and set these others. You could glue the others and on the inside of the flap. You'll also take your research pages where you've written about the zone and you'll go ahead and glue those in here. So make sure you've got the right ones here. So mesopelagic zone. And then of course you're gonna color all of the sea life and cut them out as well. And start placing them in the appropriate zones. I would suggest kind of putting them all on there first. To make sure there's space for everything you want before you start gluing things down. And then your title label, Ocean Zone by, put your name right here. I would put it in the abyss. There's not a whole lot that lives there, so it won't be in the way of any of your animals. Did you know that more people have stood on the moon than have visited the depths of the trenches of the ocean? It's because it's so hard to get there. The pressure of all that water pressing down on you is so great. So there's a lot we don't know. We know that tube worms live down there. We know that there's a type of bristle worm called the Pompeii worm that can live by the hydrothermal vents. We know that sea cucumbers can survive down there. In 1970, a cusk eel was caught in the Puerto Rican trench, but there's some debate as to whether or not it was really caught right there. So if you would like to put the cusk eel a little bit higher in the abyssopelagic zone. I don't think you would be wrong in that. Uh, the tripod fish, we think, lives down in the abyssal zone. There's definitely a lot of brittle stars that are on the ocean floor, but they can live in all the zones above that as well. So as you're putting things, just know that we're still finding new research. This crab might be an, like a Dungeness crab or something that might live in the epipelagic zone, but there are some spider crabs that live deeper. Um, there are some amphipods that are a lot like shrimp that live down in the hadopelagic zone, but shrimp themselves are more likely to be in the mesopelagic zone or the epipelagic zone. So When you're putting together this project, it looks as if the ocean zones are all the same size, like the same depth, but in reality, they're not at all. And so on the back, you may want to put this visual that will help you see how different they are. I'm cutting on the black dashed lines around the outside. There are two pages to it. I've already cut out the second one. 
I'm going to glue this right here, which is my halopelagic zone that flinches onto the bottom of this other sheet. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing onto the back of my Ocean Zones project. 